Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Shadig. I'm a teacher at Highland Park Elementary and I'm uh, really excited to be back here and working with all of you. Uh, I hope I'm becoming somewhat of a friendly, familiar face for you and if not, that's fine. Welcome to your first session. Um, today we're going to continue to talk about some fractions. We've been doing that, but we're going to start with a bit of a math talk first, which will be around fractions, and then we're going to look at some sums and differences of fractions. And we're going to dive in and finish off with a really fun game called First to Zero. So make sure you have everything you need. Um, if you're using the packets from the district, great, grab those, because a lot of the problems you're going to have to look at, we can solve today using these techniques. If not, grab a paper and pencil or something to write with and write on so that you can follow along, take some notes, model some problems with us, and see what you can do. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into our math talk, right? So, what do we got going on today? It says, determine if each fraction is greater than, less than, or equal to one half, right? So greater than, less than, or equal to one half. This is something that comes up a lot. We'll see questions like this quite a bit. And so we really want to use our understanding of numbers and fractions to think about how could we do this work, right? Without really thinking about paper and pencil. That's the whole idea about a math talk is like, how can we just kind of explain our thinking and see how these things work? We could solve this by modeling and doing a lot of work on paper and pencil. We could, that'd be great. I would love that. But let's just say in this case, we don't have that opportunity, so let's just think about our numbers and dive into what we think. Our benchmark of all of this is one half, right? That's kind of like how we're basing all of these, that benchmark fraction, that place we're working off of. And if we think about one half, right? We think about that as we model it. One half is that middle piece, right? It's that middle. Here's my beginning, here's my end, here's the middle, here's one half, right? So one half is the middle. So when we think about like, what we know about numbers and how we could determine our work with that. To determine if something is greater than or less than or equal to one half, we would probably want to look at what is the middle piece. What is that half of our fraction? All right. So let's think about three six. The denominator is the teller. It's the total teller. It tells us everything. It tells us how much we have partitioned or cut our hole into. And in this case, I have a hole and I've cut it into six pieces. Well, let's think about what that middle would be. The middle of six, right? What would be right there in between, between zero and six? What's right in the middle, right? What's the middle piece? Well, if I think about my doubles facts, I know that three plus three equals six, right? Three plus three equals six. So that means that the middle for me would be three, six, right? The middle number is 3, 6. So 3, 6 is 1 half. So if we think about this first question, 3, 6, is it greater than, less than, or equal to? Well, it looks like this one is equal to, right? 3, 6 is 1 half because 3 is exactly the middle of 6. Okay, so let's continue to practice that and think about 12. So stop and think about that. We want to find the middle of 12, right? This is a piece that we have partitioned into 12 parts, and right in the middle, if we had to shade in half of it, we'd shade in the middle of 12, between 0 and 12. So yeah, right, that would be 6. So 6 twelves would be the same thing as 1 half. Is that, I hope that's coming clear here, right? They're the same thing. Let's kind of do that. So if I looked at this fraction up here, for it to be half, that would mean my numerator would have to be 6, but it's not 6, it's 4. So then we have to ask ourselves, okay, so it's not equal to, because it's not six, and then is it greater than or less than? Well, if half was six, four is less, so that would make this less than, right? That's less than. This is less than one half. Okay, so let's continue to think about that. What would you see in these other fractions, if you thought about what's in the middle, maybe I won't, I'll stop writing, oh, look at this one though. I feel like that one's equal to, huh? Because it is one half. Nice try, they tried to trick us, we got them. So there's one half right there. But let's think about these other ones, like what would be the middle of 20, right? What's right in the middle of 20? So stop and think about that and then ask yourself, is it greater than or less than at 620s? Well, 
right in the middle of 20, right? Doubles facts is really helpful here. The same number plus itself would equal 20. That'd be 10 plus 10. So the middle is 10. This is 6 20th. So this is actually less than as well. Okay? So the middle of 100, what would that be? Hmm. Well, if we go right in the middle of 100, or half, right? Because half is that middle. That'd be 50 hundredths. And this one definitely is larger than larger than one half, right? So you can really see like how great it is to really have that flexibility around numbers and how we can see things in different ways, like using all those different operations. So notice we we're using doubles facts or we we're thinking about the middle, it's kind of like a measurement piece. Like all of that's really helpful to help to get us to what we need to do. So I want you to kind of think about what would you do for these ones, right? How could you determine that? And then really keep this in mind. It can come in so handy as we do other work with fractions, as well as I can guarantee you this type of question, you're gonna see a lot. Just gonna throw some fractions at you and say, hey, figure it out, right? Are these greater than, less than, or equal to half? And then how would you know? And I think that idea of just thinking about the middle, using the denominator and finding the middle of that is gonna be really helpful, okay? So let's go ahead and move on. Our next step today is we're gonna be diving into sums and differences of fractions. Uh, we talked a little bit about that before, but today we're gonna to explore a little bit deeper. So what do you say? Let's get started, I can't wait. All right, so here we are, we're back talking about our sums and our differences of fractions and remembering really the idea, right, when we're doing this work, sums is the answer to an addition problem and differences is the answer to a subtraction problem. We talked about sums of fractions, so let's just review that real quick. We had these steps, we're gonna model both fractions, we're gonna count our pieces and put them together in a new model, and then we are gonna write our answer as a fraction. So let's start with that first step. I have three-fourths, right? So I'm gonna model three-fourths here. I'm gonna draw out a whole, right? This represents one whole, and according to my denominator, I'm gonna partition it into four pieces, right? That's the force, and the numerator tells me I have three that I can shade in. So there's three-fourths, great. We're gonna add that to our second model that says two-fourths. So again, we're gonna draw another model to represent the whole. And we're gonna partition it into four, or cut, or divide, whatever term you like, cut, divide, partition. Um, but we gotta make sure those are equal pieces to the best of our ability as we draw them. And then we're gonna shade in two, okay? So there we go, and now we're gonna count what we have shaded in so that we can create the new model, because we're putting them together. So I have one, two, three, four, five pieces, right? So we're gonna put those five pieces into a new model. So again, we're staying with force. The denominator hasn't changed, so we're going to take the whole and partition it into force. And then we got to shade in five of them. So one, two, three, four, which means now I got to create a second, right? Because I have five I need to shade in. I've shaded in four. So we're going to create a second hole. And so one, two, three, four, five, right? So when we think about that as an answer, I can just count that, write it as a fraction, it says. So I can just count what I have, which was five shaded pieces, that fourths, right? The whole's divided into fourths, so five fourths. Or we can think about the other way that we could write this answer. If we look at this piece here, we have all of it, right? We've shaded all of it in, that is a whole, right? Four of four is equal to the one whole. So this represents one whole, and then this is one fourth. So we could write this as five fourths or one whole and one fourth, right? Both of these acceptable for now as we practice this skill set, right? So there's the addition. Now subtraction we haven't really talked as much about, but the steps are pretty close to similar, right? We really always want to be thinking about modeling. So let's look over here what we got. We're going to model the first fraction only though in this case, right? So I have two thirds, so let's model that two thirds. So this I'm going to take my whole and I'm going to partition or cut or divide into three equal parts. That's what the denominator says. And then we're going to shade in two of them. So one, two. Okay, so the second says to subtract the second fraction. So we're actually going to take one third away from this, right? So I have a couple options. Um, I like to kind of go back over it a different way to say, oh, I'm getting rid of this, right? Which then, if we write our answer as a fraction, seeing what's left, we just have one-third left, right? See, that that's just one shaded. 
Or you could also think about just uh, s when you say subtract, right? Let's kind of go back to that step. So I had, excuse me, I had two thirds, right? And then I'm going to take one third away, which I could just erase. I could erase what I've shaded in. And again, you can see we have one third. Okay, so let's, of course, practice this. We can't just do it once and be like, oh, we got it. So let's move on and think about, again, these differences. I have six eighths, and I'm going to subtract two eighths away from that. So model the first fraction only. So i got to make eighths this time. So here's my whole. And if I'm going to make eighths, one thing I can do is I can partition into fourths and then take half of each piece, like cut each piece in half like that. And if you see, we got eight pieces all together. So there's how we partition it into eights. And then I need to shade in six of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then in this case, again, we're going to subtract or erase the second. So the second fraction says two eights. So that means I'm going to go in and erase two of the boxes I've shaded in, right? Two of the eights. So one eighth is gone, two eights is gone. So that means that if we rewrite our answer, we have one, two, three, four, eights. Okay, so I know that that was a, like a quick run through, um, but I hope you're also already starting to see there's a relationship kind of going on here, right? Our denominator never really changed in any of this. And then if we look up at the numerator, we may start to see that there's just some math happening here. So that could be something that comes in handy when you're using sums and differences. Is modeling's great, I love it but maybe you're starting to see another way that this could work, right? So, great. Things have been pretty friendly to us for the most part, but one of the things we wanna ask that question now is what's gonna start happening when our denominators are not the same, when we do not have the exact same denominator, right? Up until now, it's been really easy as I model them because everything's been the same size pieces, so it's a lot easier to work with, but this is gonna happen. Like, not all fractions will always be written with the same denominator. So. Let's start and look at that today. It says, with sums and differences, the first step is the same. Step one to finding this is we're going to make sure that we have an equivalent fraction with the same denominator. So if my denominators are not the same, I want to make them the same. And I can do that by using equivalent fractions, right? And then, as you can see, sums, if we're using sums, we then go back to our steps. We model both fractions, we count the pieces, create a new model, and then we write an answer as a fraction. And if we're using differences, we go back to those same steps as differences, where we model only the first fraction and subtract from the model and then write as a fraction, right? So let's just follow this and try this out. We have 3 fourths plus 1 half. So it says, you know, if they're not the same fraction, if they're not the same denominator, we want an equivalent fraction. So we want these two fractions to say the same thing. I either want it to tell me that I'm working with fourths or I'm working with halves. Well, to help me do that, I'm going to model both of them. And that kind of helps with both sums and differences. I'm just going to model both of them first. So... I'm going to go ahead and take 3 fourths, right? And this is that idea of how we created those equivalent fractions. So I've partitioned into four pieces, and I need to shade in three. Okay, so there's my 3 fourths. I'll just label it underneath again so we have some space. And we're going to add that to 1 half. So I'm going to take and model 1 half. So partition into two pieces, right? One out of two. And I'm going to shade in one of them. Okay, this is 1 half. But I need to make one of these an equivalent fraction. So I need to think about how could I partition one of these models so that the pieces, so it's cut into the same amount of pieces, right? So this one's cut into four pieces. That's what the denominator says. And this one's cut into two. So I want to think, well, how could I partition this? Hmm. Well, if I take a half and I partition right here, I now have made a fraction that has four pieces. You see that? I have one, two, three four pieces. So I've actually made an equivalent fraction that's out of force. And if I go and count how many are shaded now, you'll see I have one, two that are shaded. So one half is equivalent to two fourths. They're the exact same thing. So I've now made an equivalent fraction. I've done that. So this one half, it's now two fourths because I remodeled it, right? I repartitioned it. So now let's follow our steps. It says we, okay, so now the denominators are the same. I have three fourths and I have two fourths. I can see that. All right, um, so they're already modeled. Count the pieces and create the new model. Cool, let's count what we've done so far. So we have one, two, three, four, five pieces shaded in. 
Okay, oh, well, this kind of sounds familiar. I think we did something like this. So I have five out of four, right? Because we're writing it as a fraction. Um, or if you want, we can just remodel. That's fine too, let's do that. So there's fourths, one, two, three, four. Ooh, that I don't like that. Let's 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 clean that up. All right. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. So we make a much more solid fourth. Okay, cool. And then we think about what we have there. Again, this is five fourths, or I can count that again as this is one whole and one fourth. So this could be also one and one fourth. So when we take, and then I know there's a lot on this page, right? So when we take three fourths and we add one half, after we follow these steps, we'll end up with five fourths. Or we'll have, or, boy, I need to have to create some space in here, or one and one fourth, right? So that's kind of how that piece works. But again, as always, we don't just stop after practicing it once. So let's kind of keep playing around with this idea. So here's one third and three six. Again, the first step is thinking about are my denominators the same? They are not, right? And I can see that if I model it. And maybe modeling first is a really good first step. So I'm going to partition this into thirds. And I'm going to shade in one. I'm going to add that to this model, which is 3, 6. And I'm going to partition that into thirds first. And then if I take my thirds and cut them in half, so I'll end up with 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm shading in three of them. Right? Now, this whole concept of putting fractions together is that we really want them to be in the same size pieces, right? That's why we do this, because it's really hard to be thinking about, well, I have a third of this, but I have three sixths of this, and how do we put them together? So we want to make them the same, right? We want that equivalent, we want that equivalent fraction. We want one of these to either be cut into thirds or the other cut into six so that they both have the same size pieces. Well, I always find it's easier to cut something up more, right? And as we saw over here with our sixes, if I just take these thirds and cut each one in half, I actually end up with six pieces now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here's one third, but I just made it equivalent by cutting it into six. So this one third has now become a new fraction. Well, not new, and it's got a new name, I should say, right? This is actually one, two, because I have two shaded in, right? One, two, this is two, six. And then this over here is still three, six. And now I can put those together. So think about that math. We just do a new model, right? So now that they're the same, I'm going to make a new model out of six, denominator, right, of six. So let's see, do thirds first, and then half of my thirds gets me six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I have one, two, three, four, five that I need to shade in. So one, two, three, four, five, which means my final answer over here is five, six, okay? I know this is a lot, right? It is a lot. So let's kind of practice it one more time with subtraction, thinking about, again, how do we find these equivalent, right? First step, if my denominators are not the same, I want to make them the same. And I can always do that by modeling. So here's one half. So I'm going to model one half. I'm going to shade that in, one out of two. And I'm going to take away one fourth. So model that, shade that in, right? So I want to think again, well, my denominators, they're not the same. These are not the same. So how am I going to make them the same? So let's try it. Uh, I could partition this into fours by cutting that line right there. And now I have one, two, three, four pieces. So one half just became one, two out of four pieces. See how I did that? After partitioning, now two of these are shaded instead of just one. And this is still one fourth. So if we go back to subtraction, remember we're only going to model our first fraction, which is now this one. We're only going to model two fourths. So boom, one, two, and I'm going to subtract one fourth. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase the one fourth, and I'm going to see what I got left. I just have 
one out of four. So when I take one half and I subtract one fourth, I get one fourth left. Now I know this is a lot, like we're learning a lot as we go and that's okay. It's all about practice. So I really want you to just try these out and see how it goes, right? Give it a go, think about the steps. Think about it as you watch this, like maybe write those steps down so you have them somewhere and then go through it. Try what to do here. I see my denominators are the same, so I can just get moving with those original steps we did. I see here my denominators are not the same, so think about equivalent fractions to make it a common denominator. And same thing here, right? They're not the same. And then we pay attention to the operations. So don't sweat it. We'll be back um, soon with some other work around this. But for now, see what you can do with these. And then Let's take a little break and let's get into a little game. So I'll be sharing that with you here real soon. Thanks for trying. Thanks for working hard. I'll see you soon. As all right. Well, after all that great work with fractions and all the different steps we need to think about, let's take a little breather and let's play a little game. This is called First to Zero. Uh, I really enjoy this game. This is a lot of fun. A uh, couple things you're going to need. You're going to need some paper. Right, something to write down on. You're going to need something to write with for you and your partner. This is good when you play with a partner. You can also play this by yourself. It's totally fine. Um, today I have a partner, so the two of us are going to battle here. And then you're going to need two dice. So if you're not sure if you have dice, maybe if you have some board games laying around in the house, um, dig through them, see if you can't pull them out. Maybe in the, you can find a couple dice laying around and we'll just play with that. So two dice, something to write with with each person, a partner, or you can play by yourself, and some paper. So let's dive in, let me show you how this works. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, you and your partner need to kind of decide on what you want to start with. And there's different variations to this game, so I'm gonna to try to kind of show you all the different ways we can do this. But let's just say, for example, the way we started today, we're gonna to decide to start at 200 and again I told you this was called first to zero so as you can see the object of the game is to get to zero so we're both gonna start with 200 points right so I don't know this is me and you could each have your own piece of paper or you can save a little paper and do it on the same piece um, and this is the other person that I'm playing and then you can go ahead and decide who's gonna go first, right? You could like, oh, I'm so sorry. You could like rock, paper, scissors it. Or maybe one of you would just say, hey, go ahead and you can start. So I'm gonna start as me. And you are gonna roll your first two dice. And you're gonna take this number. And you're gonna think about, in this place, I have two numbers, so I'm gonna be creating a two-digit number, right? So I can think about place value. So in this case, I could create the number 34 right? Because I have a three and a four, so I could put the three in the tens place, so 34. Or I could make 43, right? Choice is mine, whatever I want. I'm going to go with 43 first, so I'm going to take 43, and I'm going to subtract that from my total. So that's what I got. So let's do a little subtraction here. I'm starting in my ones place always, right? And I have nothing, and I need to take away three. Well, I can't do that, so I got to do some decomposing, right? Let's move over to the tens place. Well, I don't have any tens, so let's go decompose a hundred, Break it into 10 tens. And now that we have 10 tens, let's decompose one of those tens and turn it into 10 ones. Now I can do some subtraction. So I have 10, and I'm gonna subtract three, that's seven. I have nine, I'm gonna subtract four, right? Nine tens, and I'm gonna subtract four tens, that's five tens, and then boom, so I have 157. All right, so then my opponent would go, good roll. They gotta decide, do they want 16 or 61? They're gonna go with 61 and follow through with the same idea, right? Again, looks like we gotta do some decomposing here. So that's a nine. Let's see, nine tenths, subtract six tenths is three. All right, so it's 139 to 157. So then it's my turn and I am going to roll. Uh, I'm gonna go with 40, oh, look at that. Same roll, what do you know? I'm gonna do 43 again, All right? So seven subtract three is four, one, one, right? And then we're gonna just keep going back and forth, okay? Now, a couple questions of what might happen. So I'm just, let's just pretend. Let's just pretend after doing all these steps, my score's down to nine. Let's say that's my score, okay? This is where you're pretending I did some math. And then I'm going to roll. Now, obviously nine is a single digit number and now I have these two numbers, right? I have a two 
and I have a three. And obviously I cannot take 23 away from nine and I cannot take 32 away from nine. So once you get to the single digit place, you get to select just one of the numbers you want to subtract. So in this case, I'm going to just take the three and subtract it, right? Does that make sense? So when you get down to single digits, you can then just select one dice to help you get there. So that's one version of this, right? We play this game doing it that way. Here's a second version real quick, and you can do this with any operations, like get creative, right? You and your partner again decide what you're gonna play to. I don't know, we're just gonna play to a larger number right now, and we're gonna say who gets zero first. Now last time we were using place value with the dice. This time we're going to use multiplication. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll, and as you can see, I have a five and a six. So what I get to do with that is I'm gonna multiply my two numbers, and that's my score. So I know that five times six gets me 30, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, yeah. So I'm gonna take 30 away. So again, that's not gonna work. Let's do a little decomposing. And that would be my score. And then my opponent would go, and they get three times five is 15, and they subtract from there. So those are two different ways you can do it. Again, when getting to the single digits, Right, you and your partner can decide how do you do that. Like if you roll the dice and your product is higher than what you have left over, maybe you automatically win. Or maybe if you're in single digits, you gotta hope you always get a one because then you're gonna have to do one times something to get that single digit number. That's up to you and your partner. Okay, so those are two variations in which you can play this game. Um, I hope you enjoy it, it's really one of my favorites. Again, this is called First to Zero. And like I said, you can play it as well by yourself because Oh, you can't even see it. There you go, first to zero. Um, it's something you could just practice. It's a great way to practice your subtraction. So there you go, there's first to zero. Enjoy it. Whew, well, what a day. I mean, that was great. I really appreciate how hard you were all working and everything that we kind of put together on this. Um, I would want to encourage you to continue to practice, right? We started off with that number talk of thinking about, like, how can I look at fractions and understand what half is or more or less than half of a fraction. Like how can I put those pieces together? We then did sums and differences of fractions that had denominators that are the same and then denominators that weren't the same. And that was a lot of work. Like I was really moving through that. So I appreciate your hard work and focus with that. And then we finished off with First Zero, a really fun game that you can always play. So. Uh, let's keep up the good work out there. It's good seeing all of you and I look forward to our next session together. And as always, Keep up the great work. Thanks, everyone.